Hello again. So we're going to do two new experiments today, analyses for research methods. One is called an analysis of variance, a single one-way analysis of variance. And the other one is for the chapter on experiments with more than one independent variable. It's going to be an example of a three by two design. So let's get started with Jamovi. If you have the desktop version of Jamovi, you have already downloaded the Learning with Statistics uh, module inside of Jamovi. If you're using the cloud version, this uh, data set will come bundled with the cloud version. You can do it either way. It's going to be exactly the same thing. I'm working with the desktop version. So inside of Jamovi, let's do our experiment and open up the clinical trials number one which is called clinical trial. And here we see some data. The dependent variable is the mood gain. And what we have here is three conditions of a drug, placebo, a drug called Anxafree, and a drug called Joyzepam. And people were exposed to either no therapy or they were exposed to cognitive behavioral therapy. And what we're interested in knowing is, is there an effect for the drug? Is there an effect for the therapy? And is maybe the effect of the drug different depending on what kind of therapy you get? That is, is there a difference in the differences? At the beginning, let's just ask ourselves the question, is there an effect for the drug? So to do that, let's go into our descriptives, our exploration, because we always explore our data beforehand. And our dependent variable is mood gain, and we're interested in looking at drug. So we're going to split it by drug. And here you'll see that we have three means, 0 0.72, 1 0.48, 0 0.45. So it kind of looks like those means are relatively large. The standard deviations down here are 3, 9, 2, 1, and 2, 8. So we can kind of in our head do some skipping around plus and minus the mean here and say, well, maybe there are some differences. That's one way of doing it. Another way to do it is to make a plot. So let's come downstairs to our old friend, the violin plot. And let's ask that the data also be displayed. And let's ask also that the mean be displayed. Here we see our violin plot. So it looks as though the joys of Pam uh, condition has the largest mood gain and the placebo and the anxiety less so. There is a little bit of a, not a symmetric violin plot going on here. It looks like that's, you know, the joyzepam condition has a bit of a fatter bottom on the distribution. The other ones don't. But probably we can't interpret that a lot here because it's a relatively small data set. If you want, you can take a look at the bar plots for those things. We can also take a look at the statistics. So we can look at the standard error of the mean and the confidence interval for the mean. The standard error of the mean is the standard deviation of the mean if I would keep doing my study over and over again. So that jumps around a little bit. And the confidence intervals on the lower end and the upper end give me sort of a reasonable idea of what the range of scores would be. All right. So we have a bit of a belief that there are some differences. Let's run our analysis of variance now to ask ourselves the question, are these differences significant? And it's probably going to be the case that joyzepam is going to be different than anxiety and placebo, but we're interested in knowing, gee, maybe is anxiety different than placebo on top of that? So over in the middle, we're going to click ANOVA, and we're going to select the ANOVA module. And our dependent variable is mood gain. And our end fixed factor is the drug factor. And what you'll see here is, oh my goodness, yes, there are some differences there. This overall model F of 18.61 tells me that there are differences there. I can do some contrasts underneath the post hoc test. I can say, what are our post hoc contrasts for drug? It's going to default to doing Tukey's honestly significant difference. 
And what we see down here is the probability for Tukey is that anxiofree is indeed yay virally different than joizapam. Anxiofree does not appear to be different than placebo. And joizapam seems to be very different than placebo. I can also give myself an estimate of Cohen's D for these differences. And here we see I've got the ranges on those effects. So in terms of Cohen's D, those are relatively large effects, large and significant. And the effect on Cohen's D for the other one, well, it's not nothing, but it's much less marked than for the other two. That's a one-way analysis of variance. Now, when we're looking at an experiment with more than one independent variable, the analysis is just a little bit more complicated. Let's go back to our exploration and take a look at our descriptive statistics again. And now we're going to say, I would like to take a look at the dependent variable of mood gain, but I want to split this out by the therapy and the drug groups. And these are the numbers that I get. So it's cognitive behavioral therapy versus none in the angst of precondition and for joys of PAM and for placebo. I can see that, you know, I do have some mean differences running around here. I might be interested in the confidence interval on those individual means inside of each of the therapy and drug conditions. And here they are. Those are numbers. It's a little bit easier to take a look at the box plots. So let's take a look at our violin plot, plot the means out, and plot the mean the show the individual means in the diagram. Here's what we have. So in the anxiofree condition, looks a lot like these three numbers are not that overlapping with the no therapy condition. In the joys of PAM condition, they seem to be pretty much the same. And again, in the placebo condition, it looks like cognitive behavioral therapy had kind of an effect. Is this statistically significant? Is this difference in differences significant across the groups? Well, that's something we're going to know when we do the analysis. So again, let's go back up to our ANOVA model and we'll select the ANOVA module. And now I'm going to say mood gain is my dependent variable again, but now the fixed factors our drug and therapy. And what you're seeing down here are the tests where the main effect of drug is the joys of PAM different than the anxiofree, different than the placebo, somehow, somewhere, we don't know where. And is therapy different than non-therapy? Well, it looks like both of those main effects are there. Is there an interaction? Is the difference in differences significant? 0.12 of a p-value would say no. Another useful statistic is to take a look at the overall model test. And what that's doing is saying, in all of your data, are we explaining something different somewhere in my model? So this overall model with an F of 15.40 and really low p-value tells me, oh my gosh, yes, there's some differences going on there. I don't know where they are, but they're somewhere there. Just as before, I can come downstairs and do post hoc tests. I can ask myself, is there a drug main effect? And yes, indeed there is. So this model pairs anxiety-free with joizapam. That p-value is really significant. Anxiety-free with placebo, not statistically significant. Joizapam with placebo, again, highly significant. Maybe I'm interested in looking at the interaction effect. So let me send that mean effect back out. Now I've got all the cells compared with all of the cells. So anxiety-free with cognitive in cognitive behavioral therapy compared with anxiety-free with no therapy. And I have a bunch of p-values down here. Those are basically telling me where there might be individual pairwise differences going on. In addition to the two key honestly significance difference tests, sometimes people will look at the home test because it better controls for experiment wise alpha. You don't need to know the details of that. Just know that you can sometimes cl click that thing and get a slightly different pattern of mean effects.
just as with correlation coefficients, where we have an R, and t-tests where we have a d-statistic, we can also have effect sizes. So in a, an analysis of variance with a small sample, we're probably better off looking at omega squared. So up here, you'll see the omega squared, which is an estimate of the proportion of variance in gain accounted for by the various sources of variance in the model. And we can see from this that the effect of drug was really huge, 0.6a. The effect of therapy, while statistically significant, was much less so. And the effect of the interaction, even smaller, and it was not statistically significant. And that squares with what you see in the pictures that we did in our model and the plots. You can do Cohen's D on individual effect sizes down here, and that will give you a sense of you know, where the large pairwise relationships are. Similarly, I can send that back and look at only the post hoc test of the drug. And that will give us a sense of how large the effect sizes in terms of Cohen's D are for just the three levels of the drugs. That is all there is to this of doing a two-way analysis of variance. It builds a lot on what we've done before of looking at the descriptive statistics first and getting a sense of what the distributions are and visually where the differences are. And then second to proceeding to the analysis of variance and looking at the main effect of drug, the main effect of therapy and the interaction, also known as a moderator effect. I hope this is helpful.